today we are going to look at five of the best new features from Minecraft's 1.17 update. If you like new building materials, brand new mobs, and having full beacons, then you are going to love this update. Hey party people, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Catchy Virus, and I make videos covering The Sims, Paralives, and sometimes Minecraft. If you're not new here, hi, I'm still Catchy Virus. Hello. Now that the newest update has finally come out, it was time for me to jump back into one of my favorite video games. I was disappointed to find out that they split the 1.17 update into two distinct parts. And most of the new underground generation and expanded build limits are not coming until 1.18 this winter. Luckily, there are still a lot of cool stuff that came in this update. Before we get into it though, here's a word from our sponsor. This video is brought to you by Kira Villager Foundation. Zombie villagers need your help. Cast out from their villages and shunned by their peers. These lonely and sad villagers are suffering. For as little as one click of that subscribe button, you can sponsor a zombie villager and assist in their rehabilitation, helping to return them back to the life they once had. The cure for these zombie villagers is just one click away. This update has brought a lot of changes to the way ores work in Minecraft. On top of having their textures altered, which I'm honestly still getting used to, classic ores like iron and gold have had their drops changed. Instead of dropping the block of iron or block gold like it used to, they now drop raw gold and iron. But that's not the biggest change. That means that now iron and gold can be affected by your fortune pickaxe. That means with a fortune 3 pickaxe, you'll get an average of 2.2 raw iron per block, with a chance of up to 4. That means that beacons should be a lot easier to fully power for all of you beacon obsessed people like myself. I swear there's no such thing as too many beacons. However, the drawback to that change is that iron generates less frequently than it previously did. But I'm willing to bet that it will still equate to higher net gains of iron in the long run. You're probably wondering why the change though? According to the developers, it's because of the addition of deep slate. If they hadn't changed ore blocks dropping raw iron or gold, then you would end up having multiple stacks of ore blocks that did not stack with each other, such as iron ore and deep slate iron ore. There is nothing worse than having a full inventory when you're far from home and deep in the mines, so this is one change that is greatly appreciated. Perhaps one of the biggest new additions to Minecraft, and it's a huge one, is copper! This isn't just huge because it's been a long time since we've seen a new block to mine in the overworld, but the addition of copper brings tons of new mechanics that can be utilized for building unique structures. First and foremost, collecting copper functions the same as the new changes to iron and gold. You mine copper, you get raw copper. However, without fortune, you can expect to get two to three pieces of raw copper. This maxes out at fortune three at up to 12 pieces with the average rate per block being about 5.5. So great, you can potentially get a ton of it. But why do I need so much? Well, because you're gonna be building with this new block. The unique feature of copper is that it can oxidize over time, changing its appearance. A block of cut copper has four stages of oxidation including its original state, which are, in order, cut copper, exposed copper, weathered copper, oxidized copper. Each one has a slightly different appearance. With the use of an axe, you can polish your copper back one stage of oxidation. Just keep hitting that block with your axe if you want to revert it further. Finally, you can use honeycomb that you've obtained by shearing your beehives to wax copper and lock it in at whatever stage of oxidation that you prefer. Just like polishing, you can remove the waxed variant by using your axe. If that all sounded confusing, don't worry, I'm right there with you. For a more detailed explanation of how oxidation works, pop over to the Minecraft wiki page for block of copper. I'll throw the link in the description below. This update brings some brand new mobs to Minecraft, goats, glow squid, and Axolotl. I always love having new mobs added to Minecraft because it helps the world feel more vibrant and alive and I would say that for the most part these mobs do just that. 
Goats are the major land-based mob added this time around. They can be bred much like cows and sheep when fed wheat. However, the only resource you can get from them is milk, so they aren't as valuable to keep in large quantities like cows or sheep are. In the future, it is planned that they will drop their horns if they come into contact with a solid block while charging. Yes, goats can charge at you. They can also jump and occasionally scream. Overall, these furry troublemakers are an excellent addition to mountains and add an interesting flavor to Minecraft. Not that we're actually eating them, so we don't know what flavor it is, but I presume it tastes like meat. Next up are our two new water-based mobs, the Glow Squid and Axolotl. Glow Squids function much like regular squid. They're passive and don't cause a lot of trouble. Kind of like me. Surprisingly, they don't actually produce any light, despite their glowing effect. Unlike their squid brethren, these little dudes drop one to three glow ink sacs when they meet their untimely demise, which you can use when crafting the new glow item frame. Finally, we have Axolotl. These cute little dudes add some more flavor to our underwater biomes. They can be picked up in a bucket and brought home, or even led with a lead. They love hunting drowned, and sometimes after taking damage, they will play dead, much like their real life counterparts. Overall, I think these mobs make excellent additions to Minecraft. If you thought maybe they were a bit too cute and you want to see more hostile mobs, well, you might regret saying that when 1.18 comes out due to the warden. One of my absolute favorite additions in Minecraft's 1.17 update is Deep Slate. This new block currently generates between Y0 and Y16. It is intended upon the eventual release of 1.18 this winter that it will replace the current bedrock and generate below Y0. The raw form of Deep Slate can be obtained via use of a Silk Touch enchanted pickaxe. If you are just using a regular pickaxe, you will instead obtain Cobbled Deep Slate. Much like regular stone, you can however smelt in a furnace to return it to its raw, unmined form. Luckily, all of the new recipes involving Deep Slate use Cobbled Deep Slate, so you can save your coal. The following are all of the new building variants that Deep Slate has. Cobbled Deep Slate Slab, Cobbled Deep Slate Stairs, Cobbled Deep Slate Wall, Polished Deep Slate, Polished Deep Slate Slab, Polished Deep Slate Stairs, Polished Deep Slate Wall, Deep Slate Bricks, Cracked Deep Slate Bricks, Deep Slate Brick Slab, Deep Slate Brick Stairs, Deep Slate Brick Wall, Deep Slate Tiles, Cracked Deep Slate Tiles, Deep Slate Tile Slab, Deep Slate Tile Stairs, Deep Slate Tile Wall, Chisel Deep Slate. Talk about a lot of new options. This update is a huge boost to all you builders out there. With the addition of Copper and Deep Slate, there are a ton of options for you to express your ultimate creativity. Here is an example of something I've been working on for my Minecraft server. This is our server spawn. We use quartz and deep slate because we love the contrast they had together. With a splash of deep red color from the nether brick, we thought it perfectly encompassed the darker look we wanted for the build. If you've already built with deep slate, let me know what you think. Spyglass, hey. I can't fully explain what I like so much about the spyglass, but there is something just so fun about using them. Plus, who doesn't love being able to live out their pirate life dream by standing on top of the bird's nest on a pirate ship and staring off into the distance? Nothing beats that. Anywho, those are my five favorite new features in Minecraft 1.17 that I've been most excited about. Which is your favorite so far? If I didn't include it in my video, be sure to let me know in the comments which one you love the most. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Bye!